Okay. So we're talking about rapid aging techniques. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about specifically the ultrasonic flavor of rapid aging. We're going to do some experiments. And uh, first, we're going to just get it set up, and then we'll, we'll get into it. I got it. <laughs> so we're going to do a whole bunch of different experiments using a new make whiskey. Uh, and then we're going to put in a few different types of wood to see how the wood affects this new make whiskey. And then we're going to compare it to the aged version of that whiskey. And we'll get the first experiment going and then I'm going to bring in Daniel to talk about what we're expecting to happen, what we hope happens and things. Hell yeah. So we're going to go through and we're going to run the new make spirit in the sealed containers with the ultrasonic frequency going through and uh, basically forcing an interaction with our stand in for the barrels. We've got uh, a spiral. This is oak spiral. Basically, it's American oak char number three. This is used for a lot of at home um, dropping it in a bottle so people can do some experiments. Um, we also got some rum barrel chips which smell kind of amazing. This, interesting, it's another um, in bottle insert type of deal. This is a Mizunara wood uh, from Japan, and Mizunara barrels have become very trendy and popular in the last few years. We got just a big old bag of heavy toast oak chips. These are American oak, like most whiskey barrels are. And uh, the first things uh, I want to make sure is, even if we don't do ultrasonic, are we getting a color effect from these chips if it was just sitting out alone for 30 minutes? So we're going to check that right now to make sure that the color difference and potentially the taste difference that we are getting are in fact coming from an ultrasonic frequency interaction and not necessarily just because we put, you know, wood chips inside of a clear liquid for a while and then it picked up some flavor. So we're going to check that real quick. So this is a new make spirit that once it touches a new oak barrel, will become bourbon. The reason why I got this is because not only can we get our hands on the new make, we also get our hands on the finished bourbon so we can see the difference between the new make versus the regular traditionally aged bourbon whiskey and oak barrels versus the new make that has been ultrasonic rapid aged. Right now, we're just gonna put the wood in here, let it, let it chill out for half an hour. I may need to break this bad boy in half. All right, while you figure out how to get that in half, out. Oh. <laughs> it's used rum barrel. Now, if there is going to be a color difference that's dramatic, I think it's gonna come from this, this heavy toast oak chip. It's pretty good. Okay, let's seal these up and we'll circle back in half an hour to see if there's any meaningful color difference. Under here, um, that, I don't want you to see it yet. Okay. Things are in motion. Okay. But while we wait on this, let's talk about, so why are so many distilleries chasing rapid aging? There it? aren't a ton of them, but the ones that are chasing it because no one wants to wait four years for good whiskey. <laughs> and that's, like, we're, we're already, right. like in the States, we're already lucky. We're not like in Scotland or Ireland, we're right. waiting a decade-ish right. to get something really, yeah. Already the Americans can't wait four to six years. They're, <laughs> Can't handle that. Sh <laughs> One of the things that that is often used that does dramatically speed up um, the impact of a mm -hmm. barrel with uh, a new make spirit uh, is just a smaller barrel. Smaller barrel, higher wood to uh, whiskey ratio. Real quick, the, the smaller barrels mm -hmm. that you can have like a darker color and more more flavors more quickly. Right. Why aren't all distilleries just doing? Well, just do smaller barrels, and it's like a it's like a speed ramp. To the aging process, why is that? That why isn't that necessarily just the best case all the time? For because all... it doesn't exactly speed up aging. It speeds up certain things, yeah. but not everything. What are you looking for in? Because this is just talking about ultrasonic aging. Right. There's a lot of different things that we can do in terms of rapid aging techniques, but we're focused on ultrasonic right now. I'm what looking, are you hopeful for? I'm hopeful that it does something different than small barrels. 
Okay. Because then there's a chance you could combine small barrels yeah. and sonic aging to yeah. achieve multiple things lifting. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I want to figure out um, if this actually pulls out some interesting, nice, sweet, recognizably whiskey flavors. I, I need it to show promise. I need, right. it, I need it to taste like, oh, there's potential here. Right. This is worth, because this is admittedly a very basic, simple, simple experiment. Right. Ultrasonic frequencies going through wood and new make to Just force that ways. interaction, but I, yeah. I want to see some potential. I want to see some promise. I'm on the clock. I need to check this because oh. I'm actually being diligent with numbers. Your time? Ish. Diligent-ish. Yeah. All right. So go away now. Carry on with and, the science. And then I'll have an assortment of interesting things for you and our guests to try. Okay. It'll be so good. I'm going to leave or, the microphone behind. Or really bitter and bad. We'll see. Okay. We are 30 minutes out. We're going to see the color impact. Oh, man. This is just the straight up wood in the new make spirit here. I'm gonna throw the proof at you. It's 50% ABV, 100 proof new make. Uh, now this one, the Mizanara. Mizanara. This is definitely the darkest. Next darkest is going to be the dark toast American oak right in here. And then I think these are very, very similar to each other. Um, let's throw this in the ultrasonic thing. I'm gonna do a fresh batch of jars with um, fresh uh, wood chips and spiral bits and, and all of that. Uh, and then we're gonna run this for 30 minutes. I could add heat, I don't wanna add heat right now. Um, I just wanna do ultrasonic uh, for the same amount of time to see what kind of color and taste difference that we get. All right, I'm gonna set this 30 minutes. You'll see a temperature on here, but the temperature isn't on. See, that's on. We're not doing that, we're just doing. Uh, so this has gone 30 minutes in the ultrasonic thing. So what I wanna do, I wanna bottle half of this so we can do that direct comparison from the non-ultrasonic to the 30 minute ultrasonic. And then I wanna put the remaining half back in with the chips and let it go for another 30 minutes. So it will be a much higher ratio of wood to spirit and also a longer time to see if there is a concentration effect that happens with even more ultrasonic time. Let's get this rolling for another 30 minutes. Yeah. One last variable that we have yet to consider is most things that are going into this ultrasonic. Who knew ultrasonic sound frequencies make things weird uh, you know what, rather than do that just like an hour, we're going to let that go for just a super long time. So we get un-ultrasonic, 30 minute ultrasonic, and then higher wood to spirit ratio and ultrasonic for a length of time that I will let you know whenever we come right here we go. So it's time to go through the, the uh, experiments, the tastings of the ultrasonic rapid aging. Did we tell you anything? Okay. A little. Okay, so. What are you doing here? I don't know. <laughs> so I, I, I wanted to have a second person here because I'm gonna be doing a lot of pouring. I'm a second person. 16, well, I didn't think this is through. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, first, I'm just gonna set up shop here. Whoa! Nice. This is the new make unaged bourbon and so is that why it's so like light in color it's not aged at all it's yeah just off the still and okay. then pushed down yeah we also have the version that this turns into oh okay once so it's the real aged, one the real one okay the same new make but it's aged for you know a few years and then compare that to what does the ultrasonic rapid aging do okay so anybody that's familiar with new make it's that bready yeah. sweet Almost like a simple syrup, sugary. This is such a great new make. It though. is a nice new make. Yeah, this is Ranger Creek, right? Yeah, it's yeah. A Ranger Creek. It's one of the few new makes that, at least here in, in our state, right. you can regularly find the new make bottling and then also the bottle that that new make turns into. Right, the which is always a, bourbon. It's always a fun comparison. Yeah. How different are these? Oh, wow. All the grain actually came to the front in the aged version. Right. Even though the wood and molasses mm. notes showed up, it also brought out the bready spiciness and of the, the bread, like baking spices. Yeah. Yes, and um, a really uh, beautiful, almost a dried cherry. Yeah, and like a vanilla cream. What do you taste? For me, it's got a, like an herby aftertaste, but this oh, okay. one had like like peanut brittle. Ooh. Oh, interesting, yeah. Okay, so the first one we're gonna try. Okay. Uh, this is going to be the oak spiral. 
Okay. It's the number three char. Okay. And number three char, I think that's a good place for us to start. Why, Daniel? Right. Well, because that's the most often used barrel char for aging whiskey in America. And because of that, it also impacts scotch because they uh, they uh, regularly don't rechar barrels in Scotland and Ireland. Yeah. Uh, we're putting wood into new make spirit. Right. And this wood is, for the most part, um, not been used before. Okay. I was like, well, let's just, what happens to the color whenever we don't do any kind of ultrasonic frequency, any agitation we at all? Put a piece of wood in let's there. Let's just put wood in there and see what happens. How long? This uh, was 30 minutes. That's it? 30 minutes. No way. Sitting in the new make. No way. It gave it this oh. much color. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can smell uh, there's it. A, it's really slight, though. It Here's the thing. It doesn't like have new smells. It has muted smells. I could see that. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's not like it created a new chemical. Right. It's like it muted the vibrancy of the nose. And to be fair, I think this is extremely <laughs> close to just the new make straight out of the bottle. Now, this next one. Uh, this is same thing, spiral number three char. This okay. is ultrasonic, ultrasonic for thirty minutes. Okay. Now, any difference on this? I yes. Quite frankly, I about th the same. I think we're still very, very similar. Yeah, it just muted things. It did, which is interesting. You would think the the wood would be adding stuff. Mm. It's 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 hiding some flavors there. It smells kind of like bubble gum. Yeah, but if you go back to the original, you can find that same slight. Candied bubblegum note. It's, oh yeah, even more actually. Yeah. You're right. See, it's you still know, muted. I going mm -hmm. back to the original unmessed with new make. Mm -hmm. um, I find a little bit more cinnamon. It lost cinnamon by yeah. adding in. You know what I think may be the reason why? Hmm. Because with that number three oak spiral stave, that's charred. Maybe mm. that charcoal is absorbing some things, some of the flavors, yeah, kind maybe. of like the the Tennessee whiskey charcoal filtering. Yeah, because we've done that. Is yeah. it, it mutes some flavors? Now, holy crap! We're gonna take this up a notch. That can't be. That's real. This is that's dirty real. Two hours. This is two hours. Same thing. It's two hours. Spiral stave number char three char. Yeah. Whoa. I, that's so um, that changed dramatically. It, it did. Still smells muddy though. It, yes, but it also is starting to give me some recognizable wood char notes in there. Mm. Yeah, the the vanilla cream showed up. Think about the yeah. cinnamon roll, like a vanilla frosting cinnamon roll mm -hmm. yeah. on the nose. It's up. monkey bread. It's different mm. than a cinnamon roll. Monkey bread is so much better. Mm -hmm. There's a noticeable movement in the direction of whiskey flavors. Yeah, I totally agree with We're that. We're moving away from new makiness and into whiskiness. One last experiment with the number three char spiral stave. This is vodka. Oh. So just, this is like just neutral what, there's flavor. There's no flavoring. No flavor, the only flavor that we would get out of this of vodka. would be vodka, same spiral, number three char, this is half an hour. So what's interesting to me is just the sweetened campfire note. That's mm -hmm. the dominant note in this mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, it really, there is flavor to that. Wow. I mean, having had the vodka, I know this is our vodka, I'm assuming, right? Yes. Yeah, so having had that, it really has no flavor. Yeah. And I can tell you, that use, is like a rubbery, metallic vanilla note. That tastes like yep. glue. I don't like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah rubber. Yeah. Let's move over to oh the rum barrel. It's it, once again muted a little bit. It's muted. Yeah. yeah. And oh, just got a tiny bit of little barrel bitterness in there, but nothing extremely yeah. different. I think it tastes pretty much the same. Yeah. And now we're gonna move on to this. Should be the rum. Thirty minutes. Yeah. Once again, I'm just smelling new make with a muted edges. Yeah. No, that's in the new make too. It's just softened. It really is, once again. It's yep. more so than the just sitting in it, but it's definitely mm -hmm. just mellowed. This should be the rum barrel. <laughs> Two hours. Now we're starting to get into some Oh color. yeah, okay. So, I'm still only getting on the nose wood impact, not what I would define as rum impact. So Ooh. you're on the nose. Yeah. The taste is, mmm. Oh wow, that's so much sweeter. Much more different than the nose on this. Still new make, mm. well, but it's very different. It's still new make, but you you uh, once again at two hours, you're finally starting to pick out recognizable whiskey notes. I got like a caramel in there. What about you? I was getting well from the taste more of like a mulchiness. Okay, you want to try the version of thirty minutes with the vodka? Hmm, that's okay. You have to drink it to find the yeah, difference. The nose is like so faint. And it's very vanilla. Well, hold up, we haven't even tasted here. I did. 
Mm. I did. It's very vanilla. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't have the nice dramatic metallic notes mm -hmm. that we got on the last one, but it's just very much like softened vanilla. Oh, oh wow. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. It definitely has flavor beyond just vodka. Yes. Mm. No, even, even 30 minutes. Totally agree. Even 30 minutes, even used barrels. Yeah, but not as much as the charred spiral. Not as much as yeah. the spiral. It's really smooth. It tastes like, that's not a real descriptor, but pastel colors, like oh, washed out. Soft. Yeah, washed yeah. out. New barrel type, dark toast. So these these oak chips, like the, the color of burnt toast. Okay. Like almost black, super, super, so super. So toast, black. not char. Yes. Ah, oh, that's a big difference. Dark, dark toast. But not, not char. Not char, but really, really, really dark. So in a gradient of barrels, uh, when you're at, when they're, you're having someone do your barrels for you, there are gradients of toast and then following that gradients of char. So in even a level one char is more than a highest toast level that you can get. Mm, it still smells like the new make. Yeah, you get color. Yeah. You, you get, get color, color and again, it softens it. All I can see replicating over and over again is if you want to soften your moonshine, but don't change it substantially. Right. This would totally work. So this is going to be dark toast. This is 30 minutes. Start, it's again, very faint. Starting to get a little bit of the oakiness though. Okay, so here's the thing. Yeah. I don't know that I could pick out specifically where these are headed. I can just say it was impacted. So like if you blind right. poured me both of these, I could tell you they were different. So, and I could probably tell you the one I thought was the wood, but picking out true tasting notes, it's so, really hard. This is two hours. Oh, now, holy crap. Look at that color difference. No. Mm. Oh, there yeah. we go. Two hours? Two hours. Shots, that's wood char. It's Sugar. like bonfire, campfire, wood char, mm. and vanilla. What about you? It just makes Ooh. me think of bonfires oh. and, and like marshmallows. Oh, that can't be like the same new make. Is that the same new make? It's the same new make. And that's the same as all the other wood. This is chips, toasted chips. Dark toast. Mm. This tastes so this is woody smoky. This is unrecognizable. I cannot wow. find the source. So this is. Oh, wood chips just destroyed it. That the, tastes terrible. The dark toast of wood oh, chips. I kind of like it. You're fired. <laughs> I don't think we pay her. Oh. <laughs> Keep coming back. It's fine. Yeah. In and of itself, I'm not enjoying it, but there's something in there that I do think holds promise, which is that vanilla note. And it's one of the most popular notes in whiskey. And this is an example of the problem that ultra, that quick aging faces. The problem is that you double down on certain things while not leaving time for the other things to catch up. Mm -hmm. And once you've done that, what do you do to fix that? Because like in a barrel, you can, thank you. Mm -hmm. In a barrel, you can realize that uh, temperature's affecting this too much, let's move it to a different part of the warehouse. Or this is getting too oaky, let's proof in barrel and bring it down to switch what it's getting out of the, there's ways to fix things right. because you're still aging. But with sonic aging, you do this thing and then you're done. Right. But if you left behind a whole bunch of things you wanted, how do you fix that now? See, I look at it differently. I look at if you are comfortable with the flavors that you can consistently pull out of a rapid process. Right. For example, and seems, that's it. It seems like a vanilla is a pretty low hanging fruit type of flavor. Right. It's a very popular flavor too. Right. And if you're comfortable with that being the main thing that you're grabbing, grabbing in whatever your technique happens to be, this is sonic aging, we're getting a vanilla. Right. Then okay, you can work with that in some type of blend, or maybe you're doing it in like some cocktails, yeah, just, or maybe if you can dial it in, it's just a really nice vanilla heavy whiskey. I think there could be something there. Now to your point, I don't think you're gonna be able to chase down the complexity, the, the maturity, yeah. the, the spectrum of flavors, but I think there's some things that can be obtained pretty quickly. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, now this so is- So this is the vodka. This is the vodka. Yeah, it smells like it. It will. It's, but it also smells less like Canadian than that first one that we did. So even though it's vanilla, it's got so much more smoky char to it. This smells kind of dusty to me. I like this in a redneck, like, hillbilly. Dude, what if we sonic aged our vodka like that and we sold it as campfire vodka? It could, yeah. I mean, that's it. We just call it campfire vodka. What, the thing that is striking me so far, can you get a recognizable impact from yes. an ultrasonic um, amount of time, like 30 minutes, two hours, what have you? Uh, the answer is yes. Yes. But even with just the wood chips in there, right. you can still notice a bit, a bit of softening. Yes. Mm -hmm. We've established, in my opinion, that subtractive. Yeah. Yeah. Subtractive yeah. until it ramps back up and starts giving you. And more then you out get of that campfire wood. vodka. That last one on the, the like 
not texture, but it made my tongue like more, like there was a coating Medicinal. on it. Something left over. Daniel, what do we know about Mizunara? Mizunara is a Japanese oak uh, species that uh, was sort of stumbled on by Japan when they were trying to find a way to age in oak barrels but didn't have access to American oak because of a whole small little complication called World War II. Ooh. How did you buy Mizunara oak? Raul Martinez. Yes. Magnificent bastard. Yes. He travels around with his fellow MBs and they go to really interesting cool places right. over in Japan and they brought us these Mizunara oak sticks. No way. It, mm. This is this is still the Ranger Creek? It's a little bit different, but it, it tastes more like if you put the cake in the oven. Mm. Yeah, but it's not done yet, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Baking it a little bit. All right, so let's do the 30 minutes Mizunara. It tastes like... That mm. smells a lot smells more like... woody, but without being charred. Yeah. It's somehow... It yeah, it is. Like... It's woody, but not charred. It smells like a mild Palo Santo wood. <laughs> mm. Did she just outdo us? Daniel, feeling is she better at this than us? Uh, yes, it's very, it's very possible. Let's do the two-hour Mizunara. Uh, two hours. I'm not seeing as big of a leap no. from the 30 minute to the two hours as I was in the other. No, not at all. We got. Wait, this is too. Wow. Yep. Two no, hours. and I'm really not either. Giving up the flavors that it has relatively quickly, mm -hmm. and over time, you're not pulling much more out of it. This one, I'm well, getting a little oh, it sweeter. Oh, it's totally different. That flavor profile is Ooh. a whole different ballgame. This is. 30 minutes Mizunara, now keep in mind. Whoa! This Smell that. Gives me that cleaning smell when oh, I go this back is to terrible. the first one. Oh yeah, so if you compare it directly to like the yeah. new make. The yeah. new make has it's just so much more flavor. It smells like grain. Yeah, and, yeah. and then you get like the vodka and the wood. This smells bad. This smells like furniture polish gone off. That's terrible. On the taste, it does give up a vanilla note. Oh, like. Mold mixed with furniture polish and vanilla. I get like um, like a wet paper. Yeah, it's that's, like an that's old terrible. Attic. So I think we're gonna do... add at attic. You smell attic. It's like an old attic. An what? attic. <laughs> no. What, yeah. are, what are they addicted so, to? I have an opinion. <laughs> they just I let don't. you smell them. <laughs> For the right I price. think the number three char spiral okay. had the best interaction with the new make. Okay. But I think the wood chips were the most interesting with the vodka. That's interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna do a little trivia game, mm. as we do, and while we do the game, let's let one last experiment be going in the background, and then afterwards we'll circle back, okay. and we'll do like a nice little combination of the results there. What's the experiment? Uh, well, well. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh! Oak, number three. Let's see if we can shoot that. We're gonna do the trivia game, and then we'll, we'll come back. Speaking of aging, uh, the most of the whiskey in there is aged at least nine years. What? Yeah. Wow. So I think it's seventy-three percent is aged nine years. That's impressive. And then the remainder. This is a blend of things that they source and things that they make, kind of like right. what we've been getting into. Mm -hmm. Ready? Yeah. It's time for bullshit or legit. Brought to you by Smooth Ambler. Now this is going to be a community game. Cool. A community game. We pulled the community on various questions, and the topic for these questions is going to be right in line with like ultrasonic stuff because mm. sound waves, because music. <laughs> See how that's, I mean? that's well done, yeah. Wait, where's my microphone? Ah, oh, how can you even hear me, Stuart? Uh, according to the Whiskey Tribe, yes. what is their favorite genre of music to listen to whilst? They lay back and they chillax and they sip on the delicious whiskeys. Daniel, what say you? Country music. But I'm gonna argue that's because country's not just Keith Urban, who's actually from Australia. It's it's like Willie Nelson. And like this is like quintessential Hank Williams, Johnny Cash. This is the most quintessential, like, oh. Okay. You see, there's a lot of words because he had to overcompensate for the fact that he said country music. Which no. is, that's silly. Uh, right. We know it's rock. It's so American though. It's rock music. What's more popular in general, rock or country? I think in general, rock would be. So what is your answer? Yeah, but how, what's the percentage of Americans in the whiskey trap? I'm gonna go with rock. <laughs> yeah, you, you got it. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Yeah. Hey, Yay! congratulations. 
It's, it's, You're full of bullshit. It's a lot more fun whenever you get it wrong. Mm. But it's fine. Oh. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> well done. You get one question right. If you get two right, you can win this rad wolf poster. Oh, what? nice. Right? That's vintage. That's, That's for real. Incredible. And oh look, a microphone stand. <gasps> oh. Wow. Why you gotta like show me up? <laughs> According to the Whiskey Tribe, Brianna. Yes. What is the greatest all-time sing-along song with Ooh. your favorite people? Sing-along song. Daniel, what say you? Country road, take me home to the place where I belong. West Virginia. That's how you get a cup. Right? Here's the thing. Not only can you sing that in any bar in the entire U.S. and get everybody to sing on, right? But West Virginia is also where Smooth Ambler is from. Okay, that's enough from you. Uh, it's actually American Pie winning. by Don McQueen. Oh. Bye, bye. Oh, there's like 40 bye. verses to that bye. damn song. You can't sing now, here's that. why this is what puts it, shifts the gear, it puts it into the lead. Good old boys drinking. Whiskey. whiskey. This is a whiskey community. Yeah, They're gonna whiskey choose. and rye is not even a real thing. He just demonstrated he is not a whiskey drinker by well, naming whiskey and rye. He could have meant two different he things. He could have meant Scotch whiskey, mm -hmm. right? Whiskey without the e, and then rye. This is not a spelling mistake. Ah, uh, this is hard. Use your your thinking sound. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Okay. Ah! Yeah. And, oh, I get to push it. No! There it is! Like, this is uh, how we die! I am brought shame. <laughs> Shit, that's hurry. the fog of shame. I brought shame on my family. <laughs> but you can redeem yourself. One final question. All right. Now, if you get two out of three, this is what we're going to do for you. We're going we're gonna to let you uh, take home the grand prize that no one's been able to take home so far. Okay, I've got this. Mm -hmm. Brianna, this is a decanter from the Smooth Ambler. Daniel was once a touring the. Was it a musician? <laughs> Did you almost say magician? It's not brushwood. <laughs> I'm not brushwood. Oh, yeah. What was the biggest band that he opened for whilst touring with his band? Daniel, what's it? A ZZ Tap. It was a for pretty real? great moment, but it was really fun to get to play for a band I've been listening to. Actually, one of the first songs I learned on drums ever was Chevrolet. None of that's true. And he didn't even have a beard back then. <laughs> he had frosted, Ten. frosted oh, tips. I did have frosted tips. And ZZ Top would never let some douche with frosted tips on their stage. That's a good point. But <laughs> Aerosmith, on the other hand, with their flowy scarves, and yeah, it was opening for Aerosmith. I'm gonna go with. I, I respect you, Daniel, mm. so I'm gonna go with no, ZZ that's Top bullshit. because <laughs> no, that's they're bullshit. cooler. No offense, Aerosmith. Oh, ah, you just... That was the bullshit. Yeah. 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 Oh, where's the button? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to uh, Smooth Ann Blair for sponsoring this community game. It's good barbie's chocolate. Yeah. What is out there? <laughs> What's what? I don't know. What do you see? Nothing. Yourself. Uh, it must be gone. It's the lights? Yeah. There's lights. It could be the lights. There's <laughs> lights. Okay. okay. Wait, where's the decanter? What? Did you take the... No. What are you doing? <laughs> it's my prize! Okay. I call this special blend the best of everything. Brianna, a little bit of Daniel, a little bit of me. It kind of smells. Oh. <laughs> okay, no. You probably don't like cottage cheese. Anymore. Oh, God. Mm. Like half the things in existence mm -hmm. he does not like. Now, before we dive in, I'm going to explain the situation we have here. Ooh, that's, that's you warm. said you liked the dark toast chips in the, what was it, the vodka? Mm -hmm. yep. Daniel liked the number three char spiral right. in the new make. Mm. I like nacho flavored Doritos. I oh, come on. And maybe brownies. <laughs> no. <laughs> what, you literally just blend them into a new make? No, I ultrasonic them. <laughs> it really... kind of actually smells kind of good. I know. <laughs> it smells like super trashy. Yeah, like Dorito juice. Like, the final experiment. This is the best of all of our preferences. Yeah. <coughs> <Duh>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, mine jumped out. Oh, it's really warm. Oh. 
think anything's supposed to taste like that. Oh. <laughs> That was a perfect. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>